this one is a power meter before the time came when uh, you know we have these small things. The advantage or uh, main thing how it was conceived that it will also have its own backup power supply inside meaning it can store the things I can store each uh, item which is there. Then similarly, I can take an output and in fact, more outputs are required. I can even uh, what you call put an extension card add more load to that. One of the typical example I can talk to you is about once upon a time we had this beautiful incandescent lamps. You cannot wish away the incandescent lamp even today. If you take a small alarm clock, usually it has a small lamp inside and today it continues to be incandescent lamp because there is no LED without electronics which works at the 0.9 volts with which the main uh, what do you call the time module works. The watch module are all designed such that they work up to 0.9 volts, but usually around 1 volt uh, we will notice it and we will change it. So, you need to have an incandescent lamp which works with that low voltage. So, it continues to be there and even if you see several of your car headlights and all that they are still various what do you call you know filament driven uh, things like that including if you have I do not know some hexon or uh, some new lamps are there I am not able to get the name like that they are still continue to get you know use power and produce a bit of heat. But then when next level when the fluorescent lamps came we were all happy saying the total power has reduced. And then only suddenly the CFLs came that is compact fluorescent lamp. A CFL is nothing but a regular fluorescent lamp except it is folded and then you have everything on one side like this. And then suddenly the LED bulbs have come so called LED bulbs or lamps like that. But the critical component in that is how much power does it consume and then after the power how much light it gives. So, suddenly now we are all familiar with lumens now. So, unless some, something gives a 100 lumens per watt, it is no longer a lamp as we know it. So, this particular product was made such that things like a lamp load and all you can take power from this here. Okay. So, we have in our case you know, in India we have this the earth and this is the line and then this is the neutral. So, you can always put a thing here put an extension cord and then put any loads here and plot all these things here saying how much of power is there. And then you see one very important thing you no, know, we have something a W or as the Europeans call it a w, double V which is logical. Then there is something called a V A obviously V into A is not the same as watts there is something called reactive and something called actual power and so on. And the issue is not about the parallel transit issue is this is made in a rugged case it also has a little bit of uh, a battery backup inside and charged online and uh, what is not shown is on the other side we have a usual cable here and then it comes with uh, uh, usual plug you plug it inside carry it around and then after that you can carry on the measurements that you would like to do. The battery uh, the what you call uh, the power source inside does not you cannot power anything out from that, but it will store all the values that you have measured. So, if I were to take the studio and find out if I have to replace all these lamps what will be the what you call power consumption I can use this meter for it. It is a good concept right now they are very expensive, but you can rig up one very easily in your thing if you if you are an engineer working in a let us say engineering college or a lab or anything most of the components are available you just need to do a good reliable box. So, I will use the word if I use the word box you know it does not uh, what you call it is not a correct thing to do you need a good enclosure one first thing is it will it should protect all the insides from the outside environment and people from outside on the inside environment accidentally nobody should get short circuited nobody should you know I am sorry should get electrocuted or <coughs> short circuit some things from inside. So, we have several features which are built into it no, including whether you can hang it from somewhere and use it or you mount it permanently somewhere. 
or imagine you are in the retail, you are in an electrical shop, they will tell you sir this CFL takes only 10 watts, I take the CFL plug it in here and check whether it is 10 watts or not. You see at the back of it no, we have this, we have two nice uh, switches and then uh, we have a beautiful uh, this thing and then incidentally this dark portion is an insulator and then this uh, green portion here now is a handle by which it will make sure it does not slip. In the way it was made, it was made that it can withstand 650 volts. So, accidentally there is nothing that is in, uh, in our 230 volt system in India, we have the 400 volts from any two phases the voltage we have is 400 volts not 440. 440 is some other issue nothing related to this, but all equipments are generally designed up to 600 to 625. The whole thing has been made though it is a metallic enclosure we have to make sure that we do not get electrocuted by it or we do not accidentally spoil it. Very interesting thing no, very easy thing. Now, I will get back to a very simple graphics card inside a computer. What does it have to do with this course? This is where you will notice that packaging is important, packaging is critical. While we look on graphics card at its processing capability and how much of onboard memory it has or anything. The important thing is if you see here, this is a fantastic, you have seen that no, what a tremendous amount of uh, cooling they are trying to use. And then we have a fan here and all around the fan we have some fins and then you have copper and then more important is that we have this beautiful you know connecting thing, it should be compatible, it is 100 percent compatible with the existing PC. Any PC which is about 10 years old and you want to upgrade it, you should be able to go here and buy this card and push it inside. One, one of the important thing you will see is, you have seen this, this is all the heat sinking part of it. You remember in the earlier slide I show you some patchy patchy things on top of uh, a card. This is the heat conducting paste that is used and which is pasted onto that. Have you noticed something about it? This does not have the characteristic black color anymore, it is not black but then why why all heat devices should be black no not necessary depending on the function and depending on how well and some of them in fact are given a beautiful this is I do not know it may be actually made of copper this is probably copper and the copper has uh, what do you call fins that are uh, either attached to it or uh, part of it and then you have certain you know cover and all on this side. This is the actual heat sink can you see here you it has fins. This will go over the other thing and then it will start spreading the heat around. And I say most important you see here, we have small plastic knobs here, have you seen this? There is nothing, it is called a small standoff, something for the PCB to sit on top of it. If you see in one of the earlier lecture, earlier slides I had showed you, there are some points in which the PCB is mounted, it is just pushed on top of it and it this ensures this that the top portion gets attached to it with the minimum air gap, the bo but air is an insulator incidentally. When we talk about insulation like when we wear a shirt or when we wear a cap or when we put insulation around anything even eating or anything in the house and all that, the air which is the insulator not the in between the solid that is there. In fact, they try to minimize the solid because any solid has higher conduction than air at the normal times. Ah, now you see, you see inside, suddenly you notice very, very interesting things. We have a snaky thing here and we have an equally snaky springy thing here and then we have that plastic knobs which I am showing you all around. Not every time you need a permanent firm semi permanent connection, a lot of time the little bit of flexibility is needed. That is where our engineering skills you know, I made a statement earlier saying any engineer can make uh, you know what you call optimize the thing and it is all what to make is what we do not know, how to make we know, it is not very true. I will now retract the statement saying engineers are also working hard for us as a consumer and for us as product designers and for us as marketing people to make sure that a new materials, a new method of you know attaching things and all are there all the time. You have a spring here which ensures a little bit of cushioning is there. 
if something is mere rigid the moment there are any heat or any other aspect two things can happen one of them is something will crack you cannot constrain anything so if in nature if you see there are nothing if bones become stiff they become fragile and break as long as uh, what you call in uh, in organic systems things are generally flexible much 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 more flexible than the one which man tries to make man tries to imitate certain things sorry for uh, getting into a philosophical thing we try to take cues to make sure no in which direction the forces should be applied and then we have called isotropic anisotropic materials and so on now i'll get back to slides which i showed you in the yesterday's lecture this is part of the case of the earliest cell phones i do not know maybe it's a siemens or anything you will see that even all this is not made of a single one type of a molding material we have metals we have some flat portions and then uh, I, uh, some barrier like thing they have made which ensures that is there and finally you cannot avoid the springy contacts you cannot make rigid contacts and expect them to what you call do your function all the time so whenever you have either a sd card or you have your gsm uh, what you call a sim card and all that no you will find these small things here being used all the time ha ah, more and more interesting thing you have seen this so we have something this is the one that reads a sim card looks simple but inside it's not as simple as it looks you see that everything has to be springy or rather flexible to ensure that you get a proper contact and then we have a place here for a ringer right now they have been optimizing it and then the that speaker which you get in this no it is just a single line with the single line itself the single line itself they are able to communicate effectively but originally they were big why i continue to show this slide in all my lectures is you see the amount of effort that is taken to make sure that emi and est effects are minimized all around you have a guard and then everything you have a neutral or uh, what do you call uh, i'm sorry <laughs> a ground plane and then all the power connections everything around through the this thing parallel to it so <laughs> only one aspect of it where i said earlier no you cannot pigeon hole it uh, somebody who is making the printed wiring board should understand all these aspects and finally the person who is making the enclosure make sure that uh, things are working without any problem and then i will see if i can enlarge this portion in this corner if you see carefully you will notice something related to the production are all marked here saying in which batch the mold was made or was thing so you have a what i call a pointer here and then two pointers it will show you what type of uh, production process they have used when it was produced and all that no so they can trace back in case there is a problem they can always trace back and find out how well these things are produced see slightly as it's getting populated you'll notice that more and more and more uh, complicated uh, shapes are all done we finally come down to this detail which i showed you yesterday one more time saying things like and the input output this part of it is the one that actually makes the con uh, i mean is the contact pad and these this is an elastomer means it's a flexible material and then this is the actual pad this contact pad ensures this contact pad ensures that uh, a contact is made and all that i will show you the current things next round but right now it's a good starting point and then if you remember those flexible uh, connections here they come here what you see outside is only those things oh and then you have a box it's not as if it is obsolete now if you go back and see your uh, tv remote which you have in the house typically a tv remote 
typically a TV remote continues to have the same thing. So, you have a something which you hold it has a power uh, source a battery inside uh, I am sorry two cells form a battery you have cells and then on the top you have this keypad which you press ok. You get frustrated uh, if the if there is a loose contact, but you know what to do you bang it bang it like this and then you also take the thing and rotate it and it works only if it does not work you change the battery. So, the thing what we need to remember it that is whenever you have any contact what is called a pressure contact from two sources and typically if they form different materials they invariably end up with a little bit of corrosion in that point. So, this is where a mechanical designer has to find out compatibility of all the finishes. Any product you take which has cells inside first thing you will notice is you need to take it out and you know rub it on a hard surface or somewhere put it back at least temporarily it will be back in function. Two things happen one is in case of what do you call a corrosive film forms you can remove it. Secondly that little bit of time it takes you know it will allow the thing to pick up the voltage and that is enough for you to operate your remote. So, inside the remote control even today they continue to use uh, these uh, what do you call this sort of things here you have a cover and then finally, when the phone is closed you see the phone will look like this sir please uh, put this yeah. You see here it is beautiful it has a GSM it is a old Siemens phone you have up and down case there is a beautiful speaker here there is a microphone you have seen that at once upon a time no microphone was very very critical. Now, these days we do not even know where it is and there is a display as I have told you earlier this is a damaged phone and hence the display is not there and then all the keys are there. But you see very important thing to notice here is you have seen these two what do you call pictograms they still represent a hand set as you would find on a desk phone saying make take something you know pick up the handset and put down the handset those what do you call population stereotypes continue to be with us you do not have a off and on or you know drop call or anything which has come later on like that even now these are still valid similarly the old code where you maintain all these what you call numbers. So, starting from 1, 2, 3 no you have A, B, C, D, E, F all the way W, X, Y, Z all the keys and then you have the star and hash keys. They continue to be used as was probably conceptualized in old bell times the original when the original bell handset and all came ok. So, I will go to the next slide now. I had showed you this yesterday saying this is how typically a biomedical what you call equipment can look like this is used for uh, human gonadotropin trials. You have a carousel here this carousel you know you open this cover and put the carousel inside and we have to ensure that external contaminants do not enter this similarly you have to ensure that internal thing do not escape out and do everything and then you see all this beautiful round edges except one or two places most of the time now there are no crevices which cannot be cleaned. You can always clean this you see here now you take a wet cloth or in the case of after changing the wet cloth now they also have some separate uh, what you call sanitizer which is not the same as the hand sanitizer what have little more harsh which will ensure that bacteria and all will not survive while this is one of the simple examples other alternatives also were considered. Why I am saying this unlike engineering where often we tend to have a correct answer. In the case of design there are multiple solutions no two solutions have the same how do you say outcome it is always a compromise between several options that are possible. It is also the same thing the core part of it is you have a carousel here the carousel is a very core part of it here and then you have various you know things about taking and then you have a handle how to carry it and then can you hold it carefully and carry it without contaminating. So, these are all the several things which somebody needs to break into our thing and all that this was the final thing which I showed you already yesterday and then something important seems to be the color suddenly everything looks colorful. We never thought we needed a color in a biology equipment no, but we have them. Ah, it is getting interesting 
very 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 interesting why can't we have it more like this you see here it's a beauty i mean uh, geometry person uh, may call it a oblate spheroid it's a big name for something which looks nice and cute in fact it looks a little like a robo it looks like uh, that robo you know which goes around cleans it uh, yes that was part of the thing saying we have to make sure that once you close it and completely enclose it even dust and all doesn't settle outside this concept could not be implemented implementation is the next level but first level if you say you know in the mind we should make the concept like this and then all the time keeping in sure that the all the requirements so that uh, we have how do you open this there's no simple way of opening a hatch or opening it and loading it and then how do you use it while as a concept it's fantastic we are not yet ready for it okay so is something else this is something to do with uh, some radioactive equipment and so on okay now at this point you see here i thought of giving an exercise for you serious uh, people uh, hopefully you got a little bit of uh, exposure to how to go about it uh, and now i'll uh, show you my first slide so this first slide shows you what could be a very simple ah it's a handheld uh, meter some meter i don't even know what the meter is i said it's a lucky meter because it's by fluke but then all this uh, what do you call the form and shape and the input output haven't come by fluke they have been designed by fluke and very thoughtfully they have designed we have seen these things now you have noticed first of all the display looks a little bigger than what it can hold in the hand and then you have something red and you have common and they have a beautiful knob here we have a beautiful knob here which has something which you can use for turning okay then we also have something where you can thumb it you follow no i just use my thumb here and then i turn it like this is this point i turn like this and nicely it will turn okay plus i can use this and turn this also at the top so you see here this is the first thing ah now having gone here i think you know what it is it's a full digital oscilloscope handheld and then we all know oscilloscope is sits quite on the table on the desktop but then it has something else you have a beautiful hard case which doesn't get destroyed easily even by accident it falls it's unlikely that it will get damaged and then there is a stand at the back plus we also have a nice uh, what do you call carry handle here maybe you can carry it or same thing can be used as a sling so you have so many of these things oh beauty more and more handled instruments but mary they are getting more and more colorful ha ah, we are all familiar with the old good old multimeter so some of you are about my age will probably remember the old multimeters which have an analog dial not easy to read the dial but at least it gave a feeling that there is a relative movement about it and saying if you find something between let's say 1.2 and 1.3 you can easily find out whether it is 1.25 or 1.225 that is a quarter you always divided and managed things now the, this is the advent of digital readouts where then it's a numerical readout directly it gives you the number the number the only small minor issue about it is often not easy to discern large and small numbers so is there a way of and then this is the ubiquitous we would like to like to call it uh, what do you call off the shelf uh, simple multimeter because the next exercise is related to this very easy for you to locate one is not end of the world no you see here same multimeter or something which directly measures things so why do you need to carry both the probes around is there no way of just putting a one one sided uh, this thing this could be a signal injector as well as a signal reader as well as a continuity tester unlimited while those things had a knob which could, could operate from here this is a knob in the center this is a very simple 
what you call multimeter. Why I showed you is it is a, is a relatively ruggedized multimeter. The, but the thing inside is probably the same little brittle plastic, but then outside it has a rubbery cover which will ensure that even if you were to drop it nothing will happen to it. Two of a similar kind both are about the same function, but you see that a little bit of aesthetics has been added by giving it a U shape cover here and then the same thing these four lines you know have been kept here a little the same and then functionally not very different. The next exercise what I want you to start is first of all go and have a look at all these items go to the market or just look around in the workshop or your lab or your own home and then imagine how you are going to make a multimeter. look around all these things and then decide whether you would want to make something like this, something like this or like this or something which has this. You see here there is a somebody has added a small thing on the top there is a numerical display but at the bottom what is equivalent to that old analog display they have given a wide band in which this small thing which will show you how well where you stand in that. This is in objection to the earlier thing what I have told you. Now, you decide on which one of these you would like to make. I want you to start whether you want it a foldable in two halves or you want to have something in which the probes can be neatly kept in one corner and you see here this is a full analog and digital thing you have analog meter here plus you have a digital supply here. So, you know where you stand in that ok. Oh and then they are getting more and more complicated and I am running out of time. Most important thing here is while at the first level all the external appearance and how do you hold and all are important sometime inside you also find out how well you can keep all the items inside. Can you stack all of them and then where does the display sit? Is there a place for the what do you call probes? Why not wrap the probes around and why not do it and in case it is part of that node you need to replace the probes. Think a little about it. And then this is the exercise, have a look at it, huh? take a look around all your lab and all that, select a situation in which you will use a portable test instrument. Because the next, uh, next lecture I am going to show what my students did, they wanted to make something. Now, put the, you know, this, this thing only sir, put this, huh? make a portable test instrument, imagine a product that will be exclusive to this use meaning your instrument should be specifically tailored for that particular occasion where you want to use. List out the features you want to include, make a hand sketch of your idea, guess how you want to implement your idea. I hope this has been useful, this in relation to yesterday's thing will be a first starting point. Again I am repeating in relation to the previous lecture and this lecture is a good starting point for you on how to start designing an equipment, but there is the first exercise I started with saying no you it, it look at something which is already existing, it could be the simplest we can think is a handheld multimeter and then multimeters can be there. So, anyway thanks for your patience and uh, what do you call uh, try this, try, try this exercise it is not difficult and in fact if you have a multimeter or if you have a what do you call sound pressure level meter which are one of those things I have shown you earlier or you just need a simple continuity tester meaning I have a tube, I pack it with cells, hmm? I have two or three cells and then buy a what do you call piezo hooter with it which is about the same diameter. So, I can all of them in a tube and then it can have one or two probes at the other end. Now, when I connect it, it will give a signal that will be useful for me to trace things in a lab. One of the things is wiring and then all of us have these uh, headphones, one characteristic of headphone is it will have a loose contact. You can check those things it, depending on your concept, please try. So, thank you for today, thank you.